Oh, Jamaicans are going to have a field day with this one. You know why Jamaicans are going to have a field day with this one? Because a lot of bad things already happened in Jamaica and a lot of people have a lot of things to say about Jamaica, right? And I mean, rightfully so. Give blame where blame is due. But we got to be accountable, man. <laughs> Responsibility. Anyhow, let's get into the story. So... Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you are notified every time a new video goes up on SoFlow TV. A British man, 53 years old, kicked the bucket, kaput, went home to heaven after he tried to drink all 21 cocktails on the menu while he was in Jamaica on a family holiday getaway. Damn. Before I even start, I'll say condolences to the family. And, you know, it's unfortunate that he's gone. There's nothing that we can say to bring him back. Not a bad way to go, though. Not a bad way to go, considering all the other ways. Nobody shot him to death, stabbed him to death. He didn't fall from a high-rise building and splashed like a bus balloon. None of that stuff happened. He was in a place that he thought was paradise. Drinks after drinks after drinks, and he checked out. Jamaica is getting the blame at the moment, but let's get into the story, so... Timothy Southern, Timothy Southern, 53 years old. They know now that he died of what's called acute gastroenteritis due to alcohol consumption. A Jamaican pathologist found this. After he drank 12 cocktails at the Royal Decameron Club Caribbean in St. Anne's. Okay, so first of all, if they were mixing these cocktails with Ray and Nephew, oh my God. And then you got to think, a cocktail is probably made with about one shot of Ray and Nephew. Now, one shot might not be bad, even if it was, say, Captain Morgan rum or some other kind of rum, some John Crobatia or something. One shot might not be bad. It might get you a little bit dizzy. But they start to pile up if you're knocking back 12 cocktails. It's strip away all the other stuff that makes the cocktail and just think about the shot that went in. One shot, two shot, three shots. He's at 12. That's dangerous. Anyways, Mr. Southern, he was there in Jamaica chilling on a beautiful island. He had a whole family with him. According to this report, he was with his children. He was with his sister and he was with other family members on the island enjoying life. He had been drinking brandy and beer throughout the morning before he even got to the cocktails. This is what the Staffordshire coroner heard on June 21st. He had been drinking brandy and beer throughout the morning. You know, you're on vacation. You wake up on vacation. You think to yourself, hell, I don't have to go to work today. I don't have to be on anybody's clock. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. I want to bend the rules. I'm going to have me a cold red stripe outside and watch the sun come up early morning with a big fat spliff. It's the Jamaican thing to do, right? Or you probably think, eh, I don't smoke ganja, but... I'll definitely have me a drink in the morning. So brandy and beer started off his early morning. This is before he got to the cocktails. He then went down to the pool and joined two Canadian women who told him that, hey, we're trying to drink all of the 21 cocktails on the menu before midnight tonight. And he decided that he wanted to be a part of that. I should call that an experiment. You're on vacation, you meet two women, you know how it goes already, right? And the two women say, come on, let's have a lot of drinks. You know what happens when women drink a lot. 
and then they get all slushy and you get slushy and then consenting adults behaviors take place or you're just there on vacation just trying to have some fun and meet some new people who knows but that was the vibe and he didn't go out there to commit suicide although you know it turns out that that's what it is he went out there to actually just enjoy the vibe so he decided to join them and try to finish the 21 cocktails one after the other that was on the menu and it must be done before midnight now mr southern the british man he got through 12 of the cocktails and then he started to feel woo -hoo 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 -zy. mind you he was already drinking beer and scotch before he even got to the cocktails right beer and brandy before he even got to the cocktails so 12 cocktails in he decided listen i need to go lay down for a minute he said he was going back to his room at the hotel to sleep for a little bit and he was gonna come back and finish the other 12 that's 24 i don't know uh finish the rest of them then and he never made it back he was then discovered by his family members who were on the holidays with him remember he was there with his sister and his children and all that so his family is now criticizing the response of the emergency services in jamaica i tell people this all the time I say go to Jamaica and have all the fun you want to have, but be very careful. Matter of fact, I tell people, make sure that you purchase that insurance that comes with purchasing your ticket. You know, some people skip over the insurance. It's an extra $50 or sometimes depends on what insurance you get. It's an extra $100. I try to get the one where if anything goes wrong, I can be immediately airlifted out of Jamaica to a hospital in the United States of America. That's the one that I work with, right? And they're blaming Jamaica. And the reason why I tell people that too is because the response time for the ambulance and the police in Jamaica is not like any of these first world countries that you've been in, so-called first world countries. You know these first world countries got a lot of third world looking and fifth world looking parts in them though, right? All right. But we ain't talking about that right now. We're just going off, you know, the general. So... In Jamaica, let me, let me tell you, if you've ever been in Canada, if you've ever been in the United States of America, if you've ever been in the UK, in these places, the police and ambulance don't come like that in Jamaica at all, my friend. In a lot of places, police stations close. They have an end of day close of business time and all the police officers pack up and go home and they go cook dinner and chill with the family and be a regular civilian until tomorrow again. So whatever happened to you throughout the night is going to have to wait till tomorrow. Yes, even in 2023 and beyond. Same thing for the ambulance. They don't have enough ambulances to cover the island. That's why a lot of the times you see videos, video clips of people in serious car accidents and whatnot. And you see people slinging them like slingshots or flinging their bodies onto the back of a truck. So or somebody's open pickup truck so they could take them to the hospital because ambulance ain't coming. Some parts of the island is going to take you a half a day for medical personnel, emergency medical technicians to arrive if they even come to those parts so it depends on where you're at if you're in the touristy areas of course you're going to get a swifter response which is still slow very slow compared to these other countries i called out anyhow mr southern he got to his 12 drink and he decided i'm gonna go lay down for a minute ain't feeling too good but i'll be back to finish the rest we're making it he was then discovered by his family members who were on the holiday trip with him and his family member has been criticizing the emergency response services in Jamaica. One of his relatives told the inquest that, quote unquote, he was on his back choking. I put him in a recovery position and I screamed for an ambulance. He was making a gurgling sound. As soon as he was in the recovery position, he vomited. I was shouting his name with no response. 
In other words, she flipped him over into the re into the recovery position, and he started throwing up. But he was already laying there on his back, choking. Of course, you know the alcohol had knocked him out. I know exactly what happened right here. The un the alcohol rendered you and him unconscious, and in the process of being unconscious, you're throwing up. Now, as he's throwing up because of how he was positioned, he was throwing up and swallowing back his throw up, right? Because it's not coming out the mouth. So waste is not leaving the body. He's swallowing his waste. Aspiration. He's gurgling on and swallowing back all that was coming up. So she said as soon as she saw him, she flipped him into the recovery position, which is laying him on the side. She lays him on his side. And he immediately starts throwing all that stuff. It starts coming out his mouth. He's vomiting. He's vomiting. And she's shouting his name trying to get him to wake up. But he's not responding. When the nurse arrived, I said, had an ambulance been called yet? And the nurse said no. They hadn't called any ambulance yet. And I thought she would take over. You know, she's a nurse. So the family member says, I thought she would take over. Get out of the way. Let me start CPR. Let me use the two-finger sweep, clear his airway down in his throat, see if there's any obstructions, get him going. And I noticed that he was starting to lose temperature, she said, which means he's now becoming cold, colder. I checked his pulse and I couldn't find it. I'm panicking now. She said, he had a pulse. I was starting to lose it. I got a full look at his face and I thought he had passed away. He looked like he was gone. The relative said that the nurse wasn't properly trained. The nurse didn't know what she was doing. So this is, the, this is what they're going away saying, right? They're going away blaming the nurse. They're going away blaming the emergency medical response that they got while they were in Jamaica. The family is saying that if somebody came who was properly trained and knew what they were doing, their family member would have been alive today. And you know what? Probably. Probably. I said, don't just sit there looking at him. That's what she said to the nurse. Don't just sit there looking at him. Start CPR. Because that's what the nurse was doing. According to the family member, the nurse was just standing there just looking. She only gave him chest compressions. Maybe if she had known what she was doing, maybe he would still be here. Hmm. Okay, so let me tell you something, right? I couldn't do this kind of job because... And I need all my medical personnel on board with me. But um, if you are vomiting, actively vomiting, throwing up chunks of food and liquid, brown stuff, red, white stuff, whatever is coming up out your gut. Who is supposed to mouth to mouth you and do CPR? Hmm? Who? Because I'm not doing it. I'm going to give all the chest compressions I can get. I might use my fingers to clear the airway to get some of that stuff out of your mouth, tilt the head back properly, and start some more chest compressions. And once you start chest compressions, you're not supposed to stop until a medical personnel arrives and takes over from you. That is how we are taught in the U.S., right? And ambulance people, they get there pretty quickly. So you'll be pumping, pumping, pumping away, pumping, pumping, pumping away. And then they'll get there and they'll take right over from you. Now they have defibrillators. They also have, there are these manual things that has the piece that goes over the mouth and the nose. And it has like a plastic bag to it. I forgot what it's called. And you go ahead and squeeze those. So if a person has all rotted teeth and a funky mouth with worms coming out of their tongue, I don't know. You still want to save the person's life. You don't have to go mouth to mouth. I don't know if they have all this stuff in Jamaica. I'm willing to bet that they didn't. Because according to the family members, the nurse came and the nurse hadn't even called the ambulance yet. Even though the nurse had heard already 
what had been happening. There's a tourist around there, drank about 12 cocktails and passed out. And he's around there vomiting and he's not coming back. He's not conscious. You would think the first thing she would do would be to call the ambulance. Well, that is according to how they said it happened, right? Because I don't really want to blame her and that's not how it went. Maybe she flew into the room and she went into super nurse mode and she cleared the airway and she said, you know, forget it. I don't care about the vomit. vomit. I just want to save this man's life. And she went mouth to mouth, but they're probably trying to look for a lawsuit. But I highly doubt it, though. I highly doubt it. According to multiple family members, she came and the nurse stood there and the nurse looked like she was in shock herself. And they asked her. Have you called the ambulance yet? To which she replied, no. Wow. Wow. Now you know time is of the essence. This man is dying. There is no medical field personnel, no med station in that hotel. I think that's another thing they should do. All the money they spend on all these big hotels and resorts, they need to have a med station in all of these resorts in case anything happens to the people that are staying there. You know, some of these people are going to be in Jamaica trying to soak up everything before they can leave, including all the alcohol they can get. Right. So things are bound to happen and you don't want people dying on your property because it blights your business name. See? Right. I don't, I, she said, the, the lady said, don't just sit there, start CPR. Now it shouldn't take a civilian to tell a nurse, don't just sit there, start CPR. And all she gave him was chest compressions. Maybe if she had known what she was doing, he would still be alive today. The family member added that the service and the treatment that they received while they were in Jamaica was thoroughly disgusting wow 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 okay so let's place blame where blame should go on one hand you're going to blame the nurse and the medical personnel and you know jamaica doesn't have enough ambulances and their response time is slow to emergencies and all that but how about we blame this 53 year old man he's not a boy He's not some new teenager that's new to drinking like he just firmly turned 21 and he's like, yes, I could drink now or he's 18. In the US, you got to be 18 to have a drink. In Jamaica, you have a drink at pretty much any age. No, serious thing. Young kids go up to the bar and ask for a drink and they give it to them because maybe daddy sent me to the bar to go pick up some drinks for him. They don't card and ID anybody, right? But he's 53 years old, mate. The man's 53, so he should have known that, and he started out drinking it already in the morning before he even had them cocktails. So you got to know your limit. You have to know your limit. And I know you're out there on vacation. I know you're feeling good. They probably saved up for this vacation. They were looking forward to it for a long time. And we're going to take this vacation as family, contrary to what a lot of people believe People in England and Jamaica and these, I mean, England and the US and Canada, they just have a bag of money stashed up somewhere and they fly out to any Caribbean island. They feel like it whenever they feel like it. That's such a lie. People work hard. People got lots of bills to pay. People save for a long time. People pool their resources, put their money together and plan their vacations right. So the message in this one is be careful. Mate, you're 53. Nobody should tell you that, yo, you can't be out here starting your day off early in the morning. You are already drinking brandy and beer. And then you go wash down the brandy and beer with 12 cocktails. And your goal was to hit 21 cocktails. Come on now. What made him do that? I don't know. But it's not a wise thing to do, obviously. And truthfully, I don't know not one human being who could stand up after 12 cocktails. So think about that. And the next time you go on vacation, it's important to learn your limits. Know your limits and abide by those limits. Two cocktails, if you really want to feel nice in the evening. Three, maybe. Drink responsible responsibly 
and drink in the company of people who have your best interest at heart, right? Man, I can't say anything else about this one. I really don't think that Jamaica should bear the brunt of this. And for anybody else who's thinking about going to Jamaica and you're one of those heavy drinkers who like to drink until you fall down and all that, I'm telling you right now, make sure you have somebody with you that is properly trained to resuscitate you. Make sure you have your insurance that comes with your flight package. So if things go really wrong, you could be airlifted out of there to somewhere in a first world country where you can properly get proper care. Until next time, walk good. I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out. Peace.